Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your daily dose of Zombies news from the game and its community here on COD Zombies HQ. Thank you so much for tuning in today where Treyarch has made their biggest update into Vanguard Zombies yet that seems to put it in the right track to hopefully make it a lot better in the future. So without further ado, let's kick things right off with our first story of the day. Now the marquee or biggest change that Treyarch has made to this mode with this update where for whatever reason Treyarch actually secretly changed how Juggernaug now works in this game. It wasn't included in the patch notes, they didn't talk about it anywhere, they just went and did it. Where as of this update, every tier of Juggernaug is now twice as effective. Meaning each tier of Jug will now give you an extra 50 health where before it only gave you an extra 25. So now if you're able to get fully upgraded Jug, you will have a total of 300 health, where before fully upgraded Jug would only give you 200 health. Now the reason for this buff for Juggernog is likely to make high rounds a little bit more bearable in this game, where before if you lost your armor past round like 12-13, you were a two hit down with sprinters spawning all over the map, it basically means an insta-game over. With 300 health, you should be a 3-hit down, which makes the game a little bit more playable past that round 12 to 15 point if you lose your armor. So overall, I'd say this is a good change. The lack of ability to refill your armor mid-objective is really, really annoying for a lot of people. Now that you get an extra 100 health with Jug Tier 4, hopefully it'll make armor a little bit less necessary. Next up, heading over to the new objective called Purge that was added within Season 1. There was a lot of issues with it at launch. Treyarch is now trying to address some of them, saying that first of all, they've improved the visibility in low light areas, making it more visually clear when capturing control runes. Before, if you were standing in a purge objective, you basically lost visibility of everything around you. The quote-unquote control room on the ground was so bright that it just drowned out everything. So it seems like they lowered the brightness of those runes a little bit while you're capturing them to let you see oncoming zombies a little bit better. They also say that the progress bar no longer overlaps with various notifications such as challenge completions, rank ups, weapon level ups, and more, where before how much time you'd have left in this objective objective and how many control runes you still had to capture would actually overlap with each other on the HUD, making it an unreadable mess. Don't know how that made it past QA in the first place, but it seems like it was fixed with this update. Next, it seems like there was some kind of audio bug in the game before, but now Treyarch says that Professor Craft will now acknowledge purge objective completions. So you'll get an objective specific audio cue when you finish up that objective, where before I guess it was bugged and that audio actually just wasn't playing. Next up, Treyarch actually made some pretty big balance changes to some of the new covenants they added within the game. The first change is to the Brimstone Covenant, which basically gives you AoE damage, area of effect damage around you. It ticks zombies' health down a little bit every second. Well, Treyarch has actually changed how this covenant works, saying, quote, Brimstone no longer damages zombies when the player is down. So if you got down, the covenant would still be active. You'd be able to damage zombies around you even in the down state. Treyarch has removed that ability from this covenant, and they've also interestingly made it so that it's not really an area of effect around you that does damage anymore. Where they say that Brimstone has been adjusted to now only deal damage to zombies that are in the player's line of sight. So if you can't directly see the zombie around you, it won't do damage to them. Basically meaning it won't do damage through walls, I guess, anymore. Where before, Brimstone would damage all zombies within a set distance of your player character, now you've actually got to be able to see them in order to actually damage them with Brimstone. An interesting nerf for this covenant maybe had to do with this covenant being used in some kind of infinite damage and glitch spot exploit. At least from what I played, I didn't see the need for this covenant to be nerfed so heavily. Just a very odd change there. Next for the dead accurate covenant, they say launchers now work as intended. I believe this is a deadshot daiquiri covenant replacement. Not sure how the launchers were bugged before, but apparently they should be 
doing accurate damage now. Next, there's the Swift Vengeance Covenant, which lets you do more damage the faster you move, and also lets you shoot while sprinting. Where Treyarch says they've updated the description of Swift Vengeance to reflect that only weapon damage is increased with the use of this covenant, and not the damage of things like C4 and Thermite, I suppose. And they also say that knives now work as intended with this Swift Vengeance Covenant. Next up, they made some big changes and fixes to the weapons in the game, where firstly Treyarch says they addressed an issue where weapons obtained from crates briefly displayed the wrong model when dropping. So if you got a PPSH from a reward crate, it would briefly show the model of an entirely different weapon before actually settling on the PPSH. Just a very odd bug that doesn't seem to be in the game anymore. Next they say they addressed an issue where some mystery box weapons would appear with their magazine detached from the weapon, and apparently that shouldn't happen anymore. Next, they say they addressed an issue that prevented players from loading into a match with their preferred custom reticle. The custom reticle is a big part of your weapon customization here in COD, before a lot of players weren't able to use it in zombies, in an issue that apparently should be fixed, but they didn't fix another issue where if you pack a punch your weapon, your custom reticle just straight up changes again. Hopefully they go ahead and fix that in the future. Next, they also say they addressed an issue that incorrectly identified some launcher damage as critical hits. So it seems like before, launchers were critting zombies when they shouldn't be. We'll say kind of unfortunate here, the launchers in this game are not very good. They need all the help that they can get, and if it gets a few random undeserved crits every now and then, that's good for me. But apparently Treyarch didn't like it, and it's now patched. Next up, in a good change, I believe they fixed what was one of the bigger issues in the end game portal rotation, where you'd be getting the same objectives on the same map over and over and over again, Treyarch now says that portals will now provide players with an opportunity to visit each destination before giving them an option to return to the same location. So it seems like you will be able to visit every single location on every single map each game, where before, at the game start, it basically locked you into only visiting certain maps. Next up, Treyarch also says that they've closed various exploits that prevented players from taking damage from zombies. So there was a few invincibility and out of the map exploits, I assume these are the ones being fixed here. Next up in some fixes with the UI, Treyarch says that zone names have been added in places where they were absent from the map. This is just the callout name of the location you currently are to kind of help identify it with your friends. Seems like some of them were missing before, but they've now been added in with this update. Treyarch also says the in-game scoreboard now shows the players in the correct ranking, and, that, and I assume that ranking is done by score and not necessarily just by eliminations. Next up, since this game is released, a lot of players have complained of just how constant and annoying both the operator and various characters from the map constantly talking and talking over each other are. Well, while Treyarch is trying to tone that down with this update, saying they addressed an issue in which operator and announcer voice communications could compete with each other, so now you should see characters and the announcers from the map talking over each other less. Lastly, they also made some stability fixes, saying they addressed an issue that would sometimes kick a player to the main zombies menu when copying and replacing various loadouts, and they've also made various stability fixes, meaning you should crash out from your game less. A pretty significant update to the mode, a bunch of the new covenants getting nerfed, Juggernaug getting a massive buff, the ability to visit all of the map locations before that rotation is starting out again, are basically the main big highlights from this update. It doesn't add any new content into the game, which this game desperately needs, but it does make some positive changes for this mode in the future. Remember that tomorrow is the day that we're supposed to be getting a map update for Daron Fang, or the Christmas season putting some light bulbs bulbs and trees around the map, I guess, so we'll have to see what Treyarch decided to do with it then, and if they added any interesting easter eggs into the map along with it. But that wraps up the show today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Be sure to tap out now to check out the last edition of the Zombies News Update. I guarantee you'll get a kick out of it if you haven't seen it already, but I want to thank you again for watching, and I'll see you with another Zombies News Update tomorrow. Peace.